For what purposes did the gentleman from Texas rise? There be, uh, being no objection, it's so ordered. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Mr. Speaker, our government has been mismanaging medical care for more than 45 years. For every problem it has created, it has responded by exponentially expanding the role of government. Here are some points I'd like to uh, have my colleagues consider. Number one, no one has a right to medical care. If one assumes such a right, it endorses the notion that some individuals have a right to someone else's life and property. This totally contradicts the principles of liberty. Number two, if medical care is provided by government, this can only be achieved by an authoritarian government unconcerned about the rights of the individual. Number three, Economic fallacies accepted for more than a hundred years in the United States has deceived policymakers into believing that quality care can come only by achieve uh, and only can be achieved by government force, taxation, regulations, and bowing to a system of special interests that creates a system of corporatism. Number four, more dollars into any monopoly run by government never increases quality, but it always results in higher costs and prices. Number five, government does have an important role to play in facilitating the delivery of all goods and services in an ethical and efficient manner. Number six, first, government should do no harm. It should get out of the way and repeal all the laws that have contributed to the mess we have. Number seven, the costs are obviously too high. But in solving this problem, one cannot ignore the debasement of the currency as a major factor. Number eight, bureaucrats and other third parties must never be allowed to interfere in the doctor-patient relationship. Number nine, the tax code, including the ERISA laws, must be changed to give everyone equal treatment by allowing a 100% tax credit for all medical expenses. Laws dealing with bad outcomes and prohibiting doctors from entering into voluntary agreements with their patients must be repealed. Tort law Tort laws play a significant role in pushing costs higher, prompting unnecessary treatment and excessive testing. Patients deserve the compensation. The attorneys do not. Number 10, insurance sales should be legalized nationally across state lines to increase competition among the insurance company. Number 11, long-term insurance policies should be available to young people similar to term life insurances that offer fixed prices for a long period of time. Number 12, the principle of insurance should be remembered. Its purpose in a free market is to measure risk, not to be used synonymously with social welfare programs. Any program that provides for first dollar payment is no longer insurance. This would be similar to giving coverage for gasoline and repair bills to those who buy car insurance or providing food insurance for people who go to the grocery store. Obviously, that would not work. Number 13, the cozy relationship between organized medicine and government must be reversed. Early on, medical insurance was promoted by the medical community in order to boost reimbursements to doctors and hospitals. That partnership has morphed into the government slash insurance industry, still being promoted by the current administration. Number 14, threatening individuals with huge fines by forcing them to buy insurance is a boon to the insurance companies. Number 15, there must be more competition for in individuals entering into the medical field. Licensing strictly limits the number of individuals who can provide patient care. A lot of problems were created in the 20th century as a consequence of the Flexner Report in 1910, which was financed by the Carnegie Foundation and strongly supported by the AMA. Many medical schools were closed, and the number of doctors were drastically reduced. The motivation was to close down medical schools that, created, that catered to women, minorities, and especially homeopathy. We continue to suffer from these changes which were designed to protect physicians' income and promote allopathic medicine over the more natural cures and prevention of homeopathic medicine. Number 16, we must remove any obstacle uh, any obstacle for people seeking holistic and nutritional alternatives to current medical care. We must remove the threat of further regulations pushed by the drug companies now working worldwide to limit these alternatives. True competition in the delivery of medical care is what is needed. 
not more government meddling. And I yield back the balance of my time. Mr. Towns of New York.